moments ago, we just received a victory in a court case called May v. Bonta. This is something that is challenging the implementation of a California statute called SB2. All right, a little bit of background and why this is important, even if you are not a California resident. So like many states immediately following the Bruin decision, the different state legislatures came up with statutory responses to Bruin, essentially saying, fine, we acknowledge that we must give CCW permits to law-abiding citizens, but we're going to make it extraordinarily difficult for them to get their permits. But more importantly, once they actually do get their permits, we're going to make it illegal for them to carry their guns anywhere within our state. As you may remember in the original Bruin decision, Justice Kavanaugh opined that there could be sensitive locations. Justice Thomas also talked about this in Bruin but those sensitive locations would be very, very narrowly tailored, something that was akin to the types of sensitive locations that existed at the time of the ratification of the Second Amendment. Specifically, they called out uh, courthouses as well as polling locations, places where there was likely to be inflamed passions. All right, so the states used that and said, well, we're going to go ahead and suggest that parking lots, restaurants, supermarkets, anywhere that people congregate, those are naturally going to be sensitive locations. So you, even if you have a CCW, you can't bring a gun into those places. Okay, guys, I am going to pause this video for just a second, okay? While this is really exciting news, I do want to mention that USCCA is doing a giveaway right now. It's very exciting. You're definitely going to want to participate. You can find out all about it below in the um, in the description of this, of this video. Definitely participate. Now let's get back to uh, May v. Bonta. They've been challenged, obviously, and in California, they pushed this through in what was called SB2, and it did a number of different things. Number one, it effectively was divided into three parts. SB2's first part was to basically give an admonition as to why guns are bad, okay? The second part of SB2 deals with enhancing the training requirements that are necessary to get a CCW. Now, interestingly, and a little bit of a sidebar, this is something that the California Department of Justice is now glomming on to and trying to restrict the number of CCW trainers that exist out there. This is something that's now going to immediately be challenged. The last component has to deal with these sensitive locations. Well, immediately after Governor Newsom signed SB2, a lawsuit was filed called May v. Bonta. This case was heard before Judge Carney in Orange County. Judge Carney is a U.S. District Judge and has already ruled on a previous Second Amendment case in a case called Boland v. Bonta, where he overturned the California roster of handguns, or to be more specific, overturned the majority of the components of the roster. Now, as this case was getting ready to go before oral arguments, which were held today, all right, it was there was a little bit of uh, hand wringing as to whether or not Judge Carney was actually going to enjoin it to begin with, and number two, whether or not he was going to simply limit his uh, injunction to the challenged provisions that the May plaintiffs had, had talked about, which was those sensitive locations. It was a possibility that he may have broadened his enjoyment to the entirety of SB2. That could have actually been a little problematic, and I'll explain why here in a second. Well, uh, literally about an hour ago, we got our 43-page opinion from Judge Carney, 
and he nails it, okay? He explains how in all of the sensitive locations that the state is trying to preclude people from being able to exercise their Second Amendment rights. They fall completely outside the scope of the Constitution. It's a massive abrogation of someone's civil rights. And as a result of that, has enjoined the implementation of SB2 as it relates to sensitive locations in on January 1 of this year. All right, that's great news, okay? Now, a lot of people have asked me, is the state going to appeal his decision? The answer to that is most probably they will. That being said, for an appellate court, in our case, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, to overturn a judge in what is referred to as an interlocutory repeal. Remember, this isn't the decision, okay? The court case hasn't even really begun. This is simply a preliminary injunction. This preserves the status quo. The court case will happen much further afield, and ultimately, Judge Carney will come up with a decision in that court case. That decision most likely would then be appealed to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. For the Ninth Circuit to overturn a judge in a what's referred to as an interlocutory appeal, they would have to show an abuse of discretion. Now that's an impeachable offense. Okay, so this isn't this isn't something to be taken lightly. Um, they can't simply disagree with his decision. They can't be anti-gun, and they would have liked it if he had ruled a different way. They can do that when a final opinion is reached. On the interlocutory appeal, there is simply limited to whether or not the judge abused his discretion. That's one of the reasons why this is such a gorgeous 43-page analysis. He didn't abuse his discretion at all. He went through and did a very robust Bruin analysis on all of these sensitive locations. So I don't suspect that the state is going to have any fruit trying to, uh, or bear any fruit rather, um, in trying to appeal this preliminary injunction to the Ninth Circuit. They'll try, but I don't think they're going to be successful. So like I said, great decision. We're very excited about it. It certainly preserves freedom here in California. Other states should take this as a warning as well. All right, for all of the states that have tried to do something like this, they've all been overturned. And California is the latest in that by multiple judges. So we're, uh, we're very, very pleased about this. A special shout out goes to the California Rifle and Pistol Association, as well as the truly fine lawyers at the law offices of Michelle and Associates that litigated this case. Well done, guys, all of you. It's been absolutely spectacular to see your to see your work and obviously to get the results that we did. Uh, as always, guys, train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, and train with purpose. Above all else, stay safe. Before you go, you just missed one of our best videos that got over a half a million views. Click right here to watch it now.